Bill 42, the Trump era health policy allowing the U.S. to quickly turn back migrants at the U.S.-Mexico border for the past three years has come and gone. The number of migrants trying to cross the border was already breaking records. I think the statistics show that there are many people uh, who do not past the threshold of incredible fear. Migrants are now essentially banned from seeking asylum in the United States if they don't first apply online or seek protection in the countries they traveled through. They are part of a large wave of Russians at the U.S.-Mexico border, particularly Russian men who are fleeing their country to avoid the military draft. 1,368 in the month of February alone. It's a very lucrative uh, business for the smuggling organizations, especially dealing with Chinese nationals where they're having to pay anywhere from 35 thousand dollars and up. Are any of these people who came in this bus, these Chinese nationals, members of the Chinese Communist Party? There is nothing wrong with feeling a sense of empathy and duty to help others, especially those who seem to be in need. In an ideal world, there would be abounding goodwill towards everyone. A shoulder to cry on, to lean on, and to stand next to. It sounds like heaven. Revelations is a terrifying section of the Bible with some beautiful moments. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. It makes you want to say, why not manifest it here? Why not attempt it? Would that not be wonderful? Of course it would. But we forget we live in a world of less than ideal situations. We hope for the best intent from our fellow men, to the point of being naive. The road of life isn't an easy one, one that's free of obstacles, difficulty, and danger. There's the obvious problems that accompany this large influx of people that get talked about on the news. How to turn them away, how to house them safely, how to determine who is who and who is actually related to each other the dangers posed to women and children like trafficking, and economic reasons. Drugs don't actually come with these people. The distraction to allow the drugs to get through does. Deported criminals with lengthy records return, anonymized in a sea of faces. Inside both the genuine calls for meaningful immigration reform and political grandstanding either for or against it, we forget something very important that hangs in the periphery, just out of view from the cameras and the larger collective, a polar opposite of the ones who would like to see all people succeed. The ones who come here not for any kind of opportunity to better their lot in life. They come here for an opportunity of a different kind. We forget that there are people who are raised, brainwashed, to hate all people who live in America and the West in general. And there are various governments who despise us and who have created men and women like these. Can you find one infiltrator mixed in with a thousand people? 10 in 10,000? 10, 10,000 in 1 million? Think, what if there's a crisis in an opposing nation and as a country's leader, you decide to take action. As the defender, what do you even do when you risk your own people turning against you? You can't reveal your hand either, the things you know, the cards you hold, to the other country that is your opposition. You simply can't strafe men, women, and children with indiscriminate gunfire and then call yourself the good guy, much less a Christian nation. 
Yet you need to defend yourself from an enemy you can't identify. Blackstone's ratio is the criminal law idea that states, it is better that ten guilty persons escape than that one innocent suffer. Authoritarian governments take the opposite view. The communist defector Zheng Chang stated this was true in China with hundreds killed to ensure one guilty person would be punished, and Pol Pot's Khmer Rouge using the same rationale to justify the horrors of the killing fields. We can't really do anything in one direction or the other at this point without becoming extremely hypocritical. We lack the manpower to verify every individual's intent or identity. The US government can't legally track every individual who's done nothing wrong. However, letting everyone in without proper infrastructure guarantees the creations of slums, and I've yet to meet a doctor, laborer, or farmer willing to work for free who didn't do so at gunpoint. Our freedoms enable exploits that have to be patched carefully. If not, the results can easily be turned on the citizenry by more self-interested people. The enemies know this. They've studied us for a long time and think us to be weak because of it. Subversion is a slow and methodical strategy and process. It's much slower than cancer. If there was a good and easy solution to this, it would already be implemented. I don't have one to propose. All I have is a viewpoint that can help you make sense of what you are seeing and to recognize a distraction. The Greek army defeated the walls of Troy through a horse made out of wood. Still migrants, thousands of them in Mexico. Our Trojan horse comes in the form of a humanitarian crisis. Three separate cases highlighting the ongoing threat posed by Chinese economic espionage and research theft in the United States.